So when you hear the word navigation, you probably think of a GPS uh, or a map. The less outdoor inclined probably will think about navigating a web page. The idea in my talk is about navigating an entire community. How do you navigate an entire community? Communities don't move around, so how can they lose their way? Well, but communities can lose their way and find their way in other ways. Just think, for instance, of uh, Detroit, the great motor town that went through difficult times and that is still reinventing itself. So yes, communities can lose their way and find their way. So the idea in my talk is about helping communities redefine who they are in terms of economic success, quality of life, and environmental sustainability. Coming closer to home, right around 2000, the United Way of Winnipeg was conducting a consultation with thousands of Winnipeggers. Its purpose was to find out what people thought were the main challenges facing the city heading into the future. They called the initiative Journey Forward. As you can imagine, the consultation resulted in a long list with many familiar items such as crime and violence, poverty, downtown renewal, and many others. I was working in those days at the Inst International Institute for Sustainable Development. And uh, when the folks from the United Way visited us to discuss what to do about the results of that consultation, we found one of the answers was hidden right in their title, Journey Forward. We thought that for a successful journey forward, Winnipeg, or for that matter, any community, would need to have the ability to navigate the risks and opportunities that come its way. The logic, as you see, was quite, quite simple, but the implications actually quite far-reaching. If we don't know where we stand on the truly important priorities of a community, we risk losing direction. It's easy to see that issues that are truly important would all need to have some sort of a dial on our navigator to show us where we come from, how we currently perform, and where we might be heading. So we embarked on an ambitious initiative to construct a navigation instrument for all Winnipeggers. And with great imagination, we call that instrument PEG. <laughs> so on the surface, PEG is a website with information on all there is to know to answer the question, how is Winnipeg as a community doing on its journey forward? Where are we on track and where would we need to adjust our course? So those are important questions for everyone. However, in the age of information overload, getting the answers without the noise is difficult. So we imagined PEG as actually not just as a project. We imagined it as a, as a piece of community infrastructure that would stay with us, that would collect, manage, and present the information on how the community as a whole is doing on its journey forward. Now, as you can imagine, we are not the only ones with this question. There are countless communities around the world that are facing the same challenges and that are developing their own navigation instruments, which is great. However, it's exciting, of course, because it is our own, but also for another reason. PEG goes, actually goes beyond what others have done in more than one way. The most interesting is something very simple. We realized that 
A community's life is too rich to be told only through numbers and dials. Behind the numbers are stories with people and the lived experience related to poverty and education, income and water quality, employment and transport, and many others. In order to understand what PEG is, think of a Rubik's Cube. One system, but six sides. The first side is to decide what dials, what instruments put on the, uh, on the navigator. What are the broad issues that define the community? This is not a question only for experts, we realized. Basically, all community members have a view. And in order to get their view, we worked with hundreds of people to get, uh, to get their perspective. This resulted in an overall picture on what are the priorities of the community. What do we together care about? If you think about it, many of these basic needs, governance, natural environment, these are broad categories. Those are overall issues. However, making sure these are represented on this navigation instrument is critical. Why? Because if we don't have them there, we risk losing the ability of making informed decisions. Turning to the second side of the, uh, of the cube is data behind the dials. If you think about it, behind every one of these dials, there is more information and complexity than you ever want to know. The key to that complexity, for instance, social vitality, is that we need to understand what are the main signposts that we really need to watch as we navigate along that path. We call these signposts indicators. And to define, to build them, we look for the best available data in the uh, community. Using that data, we built up a line of markers to show the way we came, to show we developed on, the, on that particular issue, and where we stand. Did you know that between 1993 and 2013, our per capita water consumption dropped a whopping 27%? Or did you know that the amount of money we donate almost doubled between 1997 and 2013? Or do you think we need to know that the number of people using food banks started to increase in 2008? And it hasn't stopped increasing ever since. I think we should know. And I think knowing is the first step towards doing something about it. So these are, as you realize, these are community-wide issues and community-wide numbers. But as we all live in a particular neighborhood, sometimes we might also want to know how our neighborhood is doing compared, compared to others. It probably won't surprise you to find out that people living in the downtown area tend to live on a lower income, close to or below the poverty line, as shown by the darker areas on this map. However, you probably haven't realized that children who live in these same areas, as shown also by the darker areas on this map, tend to have a higher risk of suffering an injury. Is there a connection? Like poverty and health, the issues that we care about are connected. And these connections make us a community, like patches sewn together make up the patterns of a, of a quilt. The information in PEG can help realize these connections and these patterns. And if we use this information well, it can help make sure that progress we make in one area doesn't come 
at an unacceptable cost of progress somewhere else, which is equally important. So data and indicators are great, but um, behind the numbers, there are stories. So the next side of PEG is about stories. We talk to people who had a story to tell related to the indicators. Um, so when we first started renovating the house, we really were trying to do it sustainably. And over the course of renovating the house, we kind of figured out what that meant. So I think the main things that we did for water usage were that we uh, put in a pretty extensive rain barrel system uh, to collect storm water that was coming off the house, uh, which can be beneficial in a number of different ways. I think that there are definitely things that people can do, simple things, day-to-day -day things that will uh, make a good impact. It was difficult, it was very difficult to choose the one story to show you. There were many others. Should it be the one about water? Should it be about the family that accepts two people who live with a handicap in their family? Or should it be about someone who uses the food bank but talks about her dream to one day contribute to the food bank? This was difficult to choose these couple of seconds. So the next side is going beyond what PEG is. It, is. it is about making sure that the information services it provides is sustained. At the end of your road trip, you probably don't throw away the GPS or the map because you know you will have another trip and, and another one and you will need it again. There's also a constant flood of new information. You know the Google car that comes around every once in a while to take, take, take new pictures of our streets. So the need for navigation and the need for keeping our navigation instruments constant is constant whether on the road or in a community. That's why we worked with governments, businesses, universities, research centers, neighborhood groups, and others. Because we believed that by working with them, we don't simply just make PEG richer and more robust. We also believed that this would make PEG more useful and therefore make it last. The sixth side, the last side, of the cube is about the title of my talk, Reflexive Communities. The core idea in reflexivity is that the act of observation and self-reflection in a system changes the system itself. As Donella Meadows, the grand dame of systems dynamics and co-author of uh, Limits to Growth, once said, a society building its own indicator system is inherently empowering and it strengthens democracy in a fundamental way. The engagement involved in building, maintaining and using the information on the community as a whole with its richness, with its diversity, with its realities, doesn't simply result in a database, a report, a piece of paper or in a web page. It results in a transformed community, one that is more aware of itself and that is better able to reflect on where it is heading. So navigate we must, and we can go so much further if we can trace our steps along the way. Thank you.